Hi, my name is Nick Calero from Hydronia LLC. I will be explaining how to do the first part of the tutorials contained within the Riverflow 2D documentation that is included with the software. We'll start by opening up QGIS from our desktop or start menu shortcut. Important areas in the QGIS interface have been identified. Most importantly for us is the Riverflow 2D toolbar that is installed with the model. If you do not see the Riverflow 2D toolbar icons, please go to the plugins menu and select manage and install plugins. Search for the plugin by typing out river and it should appear in the list. You simply select the checkbox and click install plugin and then close the window. To create a new Riverflow 2D project, click on the new Riverflow 2D project button in the toolbar. A dialog window appears where you select the layers that will be created. The coordinate reference system and the directory path where the layers will be saved. Select None in the Layers drop down menu. We click the Projection button to change the coordinate reference system that will be used with this project. In the filter box, type 2855 and select the coordinate reference system as shown. We will then select the project directory where we will be storing our files. In the Layers panel on the left, a few layers have been automatically created. Now we will load the elevation data that will be used for this project. Click on the checkerboard icon on the left of the Layers panel. In the Source section, locate the raster file that is stored in the Example Projects folder. It's already shown here in this PC. Then click Add. In the Layers panel, you will see a new layer named HOHDEM2. We then click on the magnifying glass with the arrows icon and it will zoom into the area where the raster was loaded. We'll drag the layer all the way down to the bottom of the Layers panel so that the other layers will show up on top as we work. The new layer did not inherit coordinate reference system for the project. Click the question mark icon on the right of the layer name, then double click on the EPSG2855 or type it in if it does not show up. We will change the look of the raster by right clicking on the raster layer name and select properties. We apply the hillshade render type and click apply. Now we need to create the limits of the modeling area by drawing a polygon in the domain outline layer. We do this by selecting the layer in the layers panel and clicking the pencil icon which puts the layer in edit mode. Then we click the Add Polygon icon next to it to draw it. When the polygon is ready, we right click to close it. A cell size dialog appears. We enter the size in meters. For this example, it will be set to 20 meters. We click on the Save button to save the changes made to this layer, then the pencil icon to exit Edit Mode. Now we generate the tri mesh by clicking the Generate Tri Mesh button on the Riverflow 2D Plugins panel. If you want to know the mesh generation statistics and other messages produced by the mesh generation program while creating the mesh, you can see it in the Log Messages panel. This window is accessed from the View menu, Panels, then select Log Messages. Now we define the inflow boundary conditions. Select the boundary conditions layer in the layers panel. Click the toggle editing button to add the polygons that are going to indicate the nodes on which the inflow and outflow conditions are established. Right click to close the polygon in the desired location. A window to enter the attributes of the newly created polygon is displayed. Type inflow in the boundary condition ID text box. In the type of open boundary, select the second option, discharge versus time, 
and using the import bc file button, search for the qin.dat hydrograph file. Click on the bc data tab to check that the file was loaded correctly. We use the arrow keys to simply go down on the map without having to drag with the mouse. We draw the next polygon that will be our outflow boundary condition. This time we type outflow as the boundary condition ID, then select uniform flow condition as our type of open boundary, then enter a value of 0 0.03 for the SO field, which is the slope. Now we click on the save button and then toggle editing buttons to get out of edit mode. To assign mannings and values, we will enter polygons with particular ends. There can be as many polygons as those required to reproduce the spatial variability of this parameter. In this example, a single polygon will be drawn for the entire area. Select the mannings end layer and click the toggle editing button. Draw the polygon around the entire domain, taking care that it covers all of the cells. Close the last vertices on the polygon by right-clicking on the desired position. The following dialog window is presented where you must input the Manning's end value associated to the polygon. For this case, enter 0 0.035. We save our changes and get out of edit mode. Once the layers with the input information to the model have been created, the next step is to run the plugin, which creates the data files required by the model. After clicking the Export Files to Riverflow 2D button, a dialog window is presented. We must indicate the raster layer of the Digital Elevation Model, or DEM, as this layer is not created by the plugin and its name may be different. Indicate the path and file name. The project directory should be the same as previously selected and the same name as the QGIS project file. Once the process of creating the model files with the input data is finished, the Hydronia Data Input Program is opened automatically and a dialog window is presented with the model project to run. In this case, hoh.dat should already be set. Click the Run River Flow 2D button to run the model. Take some time to explore the information included in this window. This concludes the tutorial. Thank you for watching.